welcome to Maslow Six Wine School. Today we're going to be talking about sparkling wine. And sparkling wine, um, not champagne today. We'll talk about champagne at another time because that's one of my favorite beverages. But I like anything with bubbles. I like bubbly water, I like bubble baths, and I like what the Aussies call shampoo. Just sort of everyday bubbly that's not going to break the budget. So I've got a range of things here in front of you to show you some great bubbles to have so you don't have to break your pocket. Um, we have a bunch from France and some things that you'll know here. So we've got really inexpensive ones from France. Um, we've got some more expensive ones from France as well. The thing you want to look for on this bottle, and I'll show you this with the rest of them as well, this one says Brit. And actually you're going to see that term Brit on pretty much everything sparkling that you see, um, except for maybe this little guy at the end. Brit means dry. And most of the champagne that we drink is Brit. So when you see Brit, it means dry. This one is just a sparkling wine from France. It's about $10, $11 a bottle, so it's really inexpensive. It's fruity, it's dry, it's great for mimosas, it's great for Sunday brunch. It's great just to have around the house for when you get home from work and you're tired and you want something that really picks you up and makes you happy. For me, that's bubbles. So anything on this table I would drink after I got home from work. But this one's particularly delicious and for only $11. Now another wine coming from France, and this one has another little different term for sparkling on the front. And this one says Cremant. Sort of looks like cream ant, but it is not cream to ants. It is actually Cremant, which is a term for sparkling. You'll see on this one over here in the front, it says pétillant. And pétillant is another term for bubbly. Um, technically, pétillant means little farts, which sounds kind of funny. Um, but it just means that it's lightly sparkling. It's not as sparkling as Cremant. But these are both dry. They come from slightly different areas. This is a Cremant d'Alsace, so it's from d'Alsace. And this one is a Petillon wine from the Loire Valley. Both are delicious, both are inexpensive, and both are really great to have around the house. Some things you might be familiar with, Prosecco, I think everybody's favorite bubbles, and second to that is Cava. So Prosecco is from Italy, made from the Prosecco grape. They're fruity, they're light, they're fun, they're really delicious for every day, and they're generally very, very affordable. And a $17 of Soligo is wonderful. Moving on to Cava, now, cava comes from Spain, and that's sort of Spain's answer to champagne, and it's made exactly like champagne, but made from Spanish grape varieties. And this one, as you can see, is pretty deep pink, so it has a wonderful color, um, and it's just as fruity and delicious as it looks. Once again, nice and dry, and very fresh. We've already talked about this little guy, the Petillon one, um, the little farts from France. The Petillon here, um, the sparkling term that's a little less sparkling than Cremant, um, but not so much that you would really notice it a lot. It's still pretty sparkling. Now we're going to move on to some areas that you might not think about all the time for sparkling wine. And here with Gruet, which is a brand that um, I know wine people are usually familiar with because it's been around for quite a long time. This one's from New Mexico. Definitely not a place I think about when I think about wine. But those hills outside of Albuquerque were just the perfect place for the Gruet family. So they started planting champagne grapes and making sparkling wines in the exact same method as champagne. And for $19 a bottle, this Gruet is really delicious. It's pretty much uh, my best answer to champagne for that price. Now here we're going to go to Australia. Now Australians love sparkling. They call it shampoo. Um, that's what they like. They drink it every day. They love it when they get home from work. This one has a slightly different term on the front that you'll see. It's called Brit, which we talked about. Um, Taché is the next one, and that means stained. And this one is very lightly pink. You can't tell it from the bottle like you can from this one because it's a brown bottle as opposed to clear. But when you pour it in the glass, it has a light salmon hue because it's just been stained with a little touch of red wine. Um, and adding that little drop of red wine is something that they can do with sparkling wine um, that they don't really do with other rosés. So sparkling wines are a little different that way. But this is a nice dry sparkling, and this one's actually from Tasmania and Victoria, Australia. So it's very interesting, and once again, very inexpensive, and right around $20. England. Don't think about England very much at all in terms of they drink a lot of champagne, but they're also producing some very champagne-style wines in the southern part of the country. This is probably one of the best-known producers of sparkling wine in England. This one's Nye Timber, and it is made from champagne grapes and made in the champagne method. Um, and it's not quite as inexpensive as some of these other items on the table. This one is about $85 or so, but it is really, really worth taking a risk on. Um, sometime, if you've got some friends in from England, you can wow them and say, I've got great champagne for you, and they'll be really excited to see it comes from where they're from. It's really delicious. Now we're going to move to something completely different. To be a little Monty Python about it, we're going to go to Lambrusco. We're going to go back to Italy. This is Lambrusco. This is a sparkling dry red. 
And there's really nothing that's more exciting if you've never had it before because you think it's going to be weird and terrible and it ends up being just beautiful and delicious and you can't stop yourself from loving it. Um, so this is a red Lambrusco, but Lambrusco does come in white and pink and red versions. And this one is from Lini, which is a wonderful producer. And for under $20, again, kind of a common theme running throughout these wines, it's a great wine to pull out when you get home from work or someday when you're feeling like something bubbly, but you're having burgers or you're having pizza or you're having pasta and you want something red. Red, bubbly, cold, and dry. So pick out some Lambrusco. So here we have a great range of bubbles. We haven't broken the bank, except for maybe our little guy from England, um, but he's delicious. So these are some great alternatives to champagne, something you can have every day of the week and with all different kinds of foods. I hope that you come and try some. Check out our selections of sparkling at Maslow's 6. And any large wine store is going to have a nice selection, especially when it comes to Prosecco and Cava. But join us again at Maslow 6 Wine School. Follow us on Twitter and on Facebook for some more great wine tips. Thanks.